In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a three-dimensional page turn transition like this for use in Blender's Video Sequence Editor. The effect includes interactive lighting with self-shadowing and specular highlights, adjustable transition shape and direction, and a double-sided page that can display different images, textures, and materials. Starting from a new Blender scene, you can delete the default cube. I'm going to use the internal Blender renderer for simplicity. You can use the Cycles renderer if you like, but some of the material setup might be different. Also, my left mouse button is set to Select, instead of the Blender default right mouse button. Next, set up the Scene Render Properties. For the output resolution, choose the resolution of your intended video project. For this effect to work, the resolution is not so important as the aspect ratio of the rendered output. The effect source images should have the same frame proportions as the project output. I'm going to choose the output resolution of this tutorial. 1280 by 720, which has an aspect ratio of 1.778. Turn on anti-aliasing with a sample of 8 is fine. Turn off motion blur for now, though you may want to use it for your final output. Under shading, turn on textures, shadows, and ray tracing, and set alpha to transparent. For post-processing, turn off compositing unless you plan to use it for some other purpose, but make sure the sequencer is checked on. To begin the construction of the page imaging device, we will first need a camera view to render the curling page geometry. We can use the default camera, but let's change the name to Page Camera. With the camera selected, open the camera properties and set the lens properties to perspective and focal length to 35 millimeters. Set the sensor size to 32 and auto. In the 3D viewport, press N to open the view properties and set the camera location XYZ to 005 and rotation to 000. Next, we need the geometry that will serve as our turning page object. We could create this manually, but there is a convenient add-on that will save us the time and trouble. From the File menu, open the User Preferences and click the Add-ons tab. In the text filter at the top, type in Images, and that should filter the choices down to Import Export, Import Images as Planes. Check that on and close the Preferences window. To create the page geometry, go to the Add menu of the 3D viewport and select Mesh, Images as Planes. A file browser will appear with some user settings in the bottom left column. In the User Settings Import Options, choose Animate Image Sequences. For the Material Settings, choose Diffuse and for the texture, choose Use Alpha and Auto Refresh. Under Position, turn Offset Planes off, and for Plane Dimensions, select Camera and Fit. This will size the plane to fit exactly within the camera's render frame. Last, browse to the image or movie that you want displayed on the page object and import it. You should see the plane object directly in front of your camera. Press the numpad 0 key to view through the camera and press the numpad plus key to enlarge the view to fill the 3D viewport. The edges of the page geometry should fit precisely within the camera render frame. To see a fully rendered view of the page object, press Shift Z or select Rendered from the Viewport Shading menu at the bottom of the window. Choose the Material View mode for faster render feedback without shadows or ray traced details. I'm using this test pattern image in the beginning 
To make it easier to evaluate the lineup and light balance against the original outgoing image in the sequencer. We'll see how that works later in the tutorial. At this point, we don't want to change the geometric relationship between the camera and the page object, so we should lock all transforms for both. Just mouse click down on the lock icon next to the transform number field and drag select them all. The page geometry has the same name as the imported image, so rename it Page Object. Next, we need to subdivide the page geometry so that it will deform properly. With the Page Object selected, add a subdivision modifier by choosing the modifier's wrench icon in the Properties menu. Choose Add Modifier, Generate, Subdivision Surfaces. Set to Simple and set the subdivisions to 6 for both preview and render. Leave Subdivide UVs on, then apply the modifier. In the far left Tools menu, set Shading to Smooth. We need proper illumination to create a three-dimensional effect. Select the default lamp in the outliner then choose the light icon in the properties menu to edit it. Change the lamp type to sun and check on specular and diffuse. Turn sky and atmosphere off. Under shadow select ray shadow. Next go to the 3D view properties and set the lamp location X and Y to zero and set location Z to somewhere above the camera, like 6. Set all rotations to 0. Now lock all the translation channels and lock only the rotation Y channel. We will be using the rotation X and Z, so leave those unlocked. Change the lamp name if you want to Page Lamp. We have our render set up. Now we need a mechanism to curl and turn the page object. To deform the page, we'll rely on a basic method constructed from a lattice and simple bend deformer. Change the 3D view to Top Orthographic and press Z to change the view to wireframe mode. Create a lattice from the Add menu, Lattice. In the Lattice Properties, Set the U dimension to 64, V to 2, and W to 1. This gives the lattice plenty of resolution in the direction of the bend and essentially no dimension in Z thickness, just like the page object it is deforming. Now scale it to the same size as the page object or a little bigger. It doesn't need to be exact it just needs to cover the entire width of the page. Next, with the lattice selected, add a simple deform modifier. For the deform type, choose Bend. For the deform axis, create an empty, Shift A, Empty, Plane Axes. In the Transform Properties, set the empty's X rotation to 90 and move the X location to the left side edge of the lattice. I prefer to be exact when I can, so the correct value will be negative one-half the X scale of the lattice. Just select the lattice and copy the X scale value property, then paste the value into the empty's X location. Make it negative and divide it by two. Now scale the empty to about 0.1 to make it less obtrusive. Name the empty Bend Axis. Reselect the lattice and go back to its bend deformer to assign the bend axis as the axis origin. In the bend deformer, set the deform angle to 180 degrees. Leave the first limit at zero and set the second bottom limit to near 0.25. These are good settings for a normal page curl effect. 
The first limit should always stay at zero. The deform angle sets the degree or angle of the curl, and the upper limit affects the size or diameter of the curl. Now we need to make a manipulator to control the position and direction of the lattice deformer. Create a new empty, but make it a single arrow type. Rotate it minus 90 in Y and move its X location to minus 4.91. I will explain why shortly. Rename the new empty Page Deformer. Parent the lattice and bend axis to the page deformer, either by dragging each into the page deformer in the outliner or by selecting the lattice and the bend axis, then the page deformer last, and pressing Control P, set parent to object, keep transform. Last, move the page deformer to location zero. To apply the deformer to the page object, select the page object and create a lattice deformer from the modifiers menu. Then assign the lattice as the deformer. For safety, we should lock the transforms of the various objects that should not be moved. Lock all transforms on the page object. Lock the page deformer location Z, rotation Y and Z, and all scale. To change the size of the page deformer arrow manipulator, use the empty size property to make it easier to select and move. Lock all transforms of the bend axis and the lattice. In the outliner, hide the bend axis by clicking off the eyeball icon to the right and make it non-selectable by clicking off the arrow icon. Make the lattice and page object non-selectable as well. Then close the page deformer hierarchy. Now we can easily select the page deformer arrow manipulator without the other objects interfering with our selection. We can move it on the horizontal XY plane and rotate it only on the Z axis by hitting the R key. With these two actions, we can deform the page object from any direction. These controls are then keyframed to create the page turning effect. Switch to material shading mode to see the deformation. The special value of minus 4.91 I placed on the deformer X location earlier was to position the edge of the deformer exactly at the corners of the page when the deformer is at its default zero position. This maintains a proper starting distance without deforming the page at any orientation. I'll leave the page curled at an angle in preparation for materials and lighting. Before we do any further construction, we should set some default values for our basic material and texture. Select the page object to view its material properties. In the interest of time and simplicity, I'll display my material and texture settings all together, which you can copy into your scene property settings. Just pause the video for as long as you need to view them. In the materials properties, Double-click the name in the Materials list or material slot to rename this material Material A. Next to the Scene Materials Lister, click the Use Nodes button on the right. We are going to edit the material using the Node Editor, which will allow us to apply special capabilities that are not provided in the Standard Materials Editor. Open the Node Editor by pressing Shift F3 or selecting it from the window mode selector on the bottom left of the large viewport. Within the node editor we are going to give the material the ability to display a different texture on each side of the page object. For that we will need a copy of the original material created by the images as planes add-on. 
Currently, the material node is not displaying our original image material. Select the material name in the lister to refresh the node. With the material node selected, press Shift-D to duplicate it and move the duplicate below the original node. Next, add an input geometry node. Move that above and to the right of the material nodes. Last, we need a mix node to combine all of these into a single shader. Choose Add, Color, Mix RGB. Move the mix node over the wire connecting the first material node to the output node. This allows an automatic connection between nodes. Now connect the color output of the duplicate material node to the color 2 input of the mix node. Last, connect the bottom front back output of the geometry node to the factor input of the mix node. The geometry node gives us the ability to map different materials onto the opposing faces of the page object. For now, we will use only one material on both the front and back side of the page, but we still need different material settings on our two material nodes to create the lighting effects that will give our page curl a realistic 3D appearance. Press Shift F5 to switch to the 3D view. Toggle Shift Z to see the fully rendered material on the page object. Press the numpad zero key for the camera view. To move the deformer, it will help to have a separate 3D viewport. I'll open a new window just above the outliner. Currently, you can see how the back side of the page is rendered as though the image is projected through the page. We are getting a very nice deformation of the page and we are seeing some specular shininess, but the lighting is flat and the shadow is dead black revealing nothing underneath. This is due to the light aiming straight down and the lack of material emission to fill in the shadow. So I'll reselect the page object to look at its material settings. In the shading parameters, I'll bring the emit value up to 0.3, and now we can see some detail inside the shadow. But there is still an awful glare on the front surface of the page due to the specularity of the material operating on both sides. We must go back into the node editor to fix this problem. In the small 3D view, press numpad 0 to view through the camera and Shift-Z to see a rendered image. Back in the node editor, go to the bottom material node connected to the Mix Color 2 input and turn off the specular property. You should see the front side of the page in the 3D viewport free of specular glare. Toggle the specularity on and off to see the difference. The specular property should always be off on this material node to ensure a clean and imperceptible transition between the outgoing image in the video sequencer and the incoming page curl effect. I'll relabel these material nodes to distinguish their function. I'll rename the material for the front of the page to Front Side Shadow and rename the other Backside Specular. To adjust the position of the shadow and the specular highlight, we need to edit the parameters in the page lamp. Switch the node editor window back to the 3D viewer and select the page lamp so we can view its properties. In the viewport transform properties, adjust the rotation X to a negative value away from zero. You should see the shadow of the curled page shift downward. Now move the rotation Z to a negative value towards minus 180. You should see the shadow rotate around toward the top of the page. The X rotation controls the steepness 
or length of the shadow, and the z-rotation controls the angle or direction of the shadow around a circle. Observe also the specular highlight on the opposite side of the page curling over. As the lighting angle changes, the position and definition of the highlight changes as well. This is helpful for enhancing the three-dimensional quality of the effect. If you want a brighter, more distinct highlight, just increase the specular intensity and hardness in the material. At this point, the construction of the 3D portion of the effect is essentially complete. What remains now is to go into the video sequencer to set up the image transition and fine-tune the lighting and effects. Select the Video Sequence Editor from the Viewport Editor menu or press Shift F8 to open the video sequencer. Select the third view mode to see both the strip sequencer and the render view. From the Add menu, choose Movie or Image, whichever type you imported into the page object. Then press the Home key to zoom the preview to full view. The sequencer needs to be in render mode, which you can change from within the Properties panel, Scene Preview Render Options. Now add a scene strip referencing your current scene containing the page and render camera. Move the scene strip past the beginning of the image strip to the time when you want the transition effect to happen. Using the left-right arrow keys, jog the time frame across the transition between the two strips to evaluate the change between images. Check for any mismatch in image alignment and image brightness across the transition between images. There should not be any alignment difference, but there might be a difference in brightness. The brightness difference will change whenever you adjust the page shadow darkness using the material emission value. To better evaluate the difference in luminance between images, create a wipe effect between them. Select the outgoing image strip and shift select the scene strip, then add effect wipe. In the strip properties, check off default fade so you can manually adjust the wipe position. Set the wipe edge at an angle to make it easier to locate. Now move the wipe edge to see the brightness difference between the image strips. If the incoming scene strip is brighter, go into the light properties and adjust the lamp energy level down. Jog the sequencer to a new frame or press the refresh sequencer button to ensure that you are viewing the updated render. Keep making this adjustment until you cannot see any difference on either side of the wipe. For precision, use the color sampler eyedropper tool accessible from the shadow properties color chooser. Click on the color swatch to see the color controls. Switch it to HSV mode, then click on the eyedropper icon or press the E key while the mouse is over the control. Sample a part of the image that is normally of equal color value on each side of the wipe. Compare each sample V value and continue adjusting the light energy until both samples are equal. When finished, be sure to return the shadow color back to its original value or default of black. If you still need to adjust the darkness of the shadow on the front of the page, go to the Page Object Material settings and change the emission value, higher for a lighter shadow or lower for a darker shadow. You won't see the changes in the sequencer preview until you update the timeline or refresh the sequencer. 
Once you have set the light and shadow balance to your liking, the settings should be good for any image you import. But you should always do a comparison to be sure. Delete the wipe effects strip before continuing. To begin building the page turn transition, I'll first replace the test pattern image strip with a new image sequence strip as the beginning of the transition. I'll start it at frame 1 and make it 30 frames long. Now the effect scene strip must be moved to begin where the outgoing strip ends. Also, since the scene strip will display rendered animation and moving texture images, its frame timing must be adjusted to synchronize with the sequence or timeline. This can be done using the strip hard trim duration. Set the trim duration start to 30, which is the frame offset from the beginning of the project at frame 1. Adjust the length of the effect strip to the length of time you want the effect to last, maybe 3 seconds or 90 frames. Next, create a new image strip for the image that will appear underneath the page curl and continue beyond the end of the transition. The new incoming image should follow directly after the preceding image strip. The new image should appear in the transparent area behind the page curl. If you cannot see it, select the scene strip and change the blend mode to over drop. We still don't have the proper texture image in the page object material to continue the outgoing image through the transition. I'll replace the test pattern image with the new image sequence in the texture settings. Then rename the texture. To see the change in the sequencer, press the refresh sequencer button and jog the timeline to a new frame. We now have a nice mirrored image page effect, but the sequence animation is not updating. We have to set the image sequence duration in the texture properties. The transition ends at frame 120, so set the frames to 120 and the start frame to 1. The number in parentheses on the left of the frames value indicates the actual frame of the texture image sequence being displayed. It is determined by the image start and offset values and the current animation timeline frame. Press the page down key to move the cursor to the beginning of the scene strip. Switch the main view to the 3D viewer. When you are happy with the shadow angle and specular value, Switch the render mode to Material for a faster image update. Now select the Page Deformer so we can begin animating the page curl. Adjust the X rotation or just press the R key to find the curl angle you like. Then set the X and Y location to zero. Set keyframes on the X and Y location and the X rotation. Now move the timeline frame ahead 90 frames to the end of the transition. Grab the page deformer arrow to move the deformer to the far edge of the page so that it just clears the camera view. Set keyframes on that position. Scrub the timeline to view the animation. Return the timeline to the head of the scene and Shift F8 to return to the sequencer. Change the scene preview render to material for a faster update. Then play the sequence to view it. In material mode, the image brightness may change at the transition, but it will not in render mode 
since we have already properly adjusted the lighting values. The beginning of the page curl may appear to get a late start, but that is partly due to perspective and the default keyframe ease in interpolation. You can speed up the beginning by changing the interpolation settings and Bezier curve tangents in the graph editor. Since we have separate material nodes for each side of the page, it is possible to display a different image on the back side of the page as it is turning over. To do this, we need to define a new material with a new image texture. Select the page object in the outliner, then Shift F3 to display the node editor. Go to the materials properties and create a new material by clicking the plus icon in the Scene Materials Lister. Rename it Material B. Turn off the Use Nodes button for this material. Now go to the Texture Properties where you should see the currently assigned texture for that material in the Texture Slots list. On the Texture Browser just below, click on the plus symbol to create a new texture. Within the Image Properties, Navigate to the new image or movie clip you want to use and import it. Then give the texture an appropriate short name. Go back to the Materials Properties and reselect the Material A that is being controlled by the node network. To display the new material, simply select it from the Material Lister in the appropriate node. We can display either material or both on either side of the page by switching them in the nodes. It is important to always have the node-based material A selected in the materials properties while the page object is selected. This is how the material is assigned to the object. Only use the node material browser to select which material to display on the page sides. The names of the materials do not refer to specific images because you will use only these two materials to display any number of different images at any given time. The materials will display various textures, and only the textures will have descriptive names for their images. To add a new texture image to a material, create a new texture by clicking the plus symbol then browse to a new image or movie sequence. Rename the texture appropriately. Select a new row in the Texture Slots list to apply the new texture to the material. Then reset the texture slot above to the texture previously assigned to it. The new texture will be applied and displayed as the current texture even though both texture slots are active. The bottom texture gets priority. The checkboxes can be animated on and off to create a timed edit between images. Using this method, you can perform as many transitions as you want in your project with this single page deformer setup. Just add as many image textures as you need for the two materials and alternately animate them on and off in time with each transition. Each new page transition requires a new instance of the scene strip. Here is an example of a sequence of two page turn transitions, one with the same image on both sides and the other with different images on each side. In the sequencer, I have two instances of the page deformer scene strip and three background images in sequence. In the graph editor, we can see how the page deformer is animated with the deformer X location keyframed from frame 31 to 121. Then in the middle of the sequence, between transitions, the deformer X location is reset to zero for the next scene strip transition. Likewise, for the deformer X rotation, 
which controls the direction of the page curl. We can see this more clearly in the 3D perspective view. The page lamp is similarly animated to reorient the page shadow and specular highlight for the next transition. To match the image brightness at the beginning of the second transition, I had to keyframe the lamp intensity. For the page textures, the first transition displays the outgoing flower image on both sides of the page. We can see the texture assignments in the node editor. Each node representing a different side of the page is displaying different materials but the same texture. If we look at the texture assignments, we can see the flower image applied to both materials and keyframed. I can change which material property is being displayed by selecting either node in the node editor. In the graph editor, we can see how the texture images are keyframed between transitions. At frame 135, I keyframed the first texture in the texture slot list on. This is labeled 0 in the graph editor. The texture IDs are indexed numerically starting from 0. The keyframe values are Boolean integers of 1 for on and 0 for off. On the following frame 136, I keyframed that texture off and keyframed the next texture on in preparation for the upcoming transition. As I jog the timeline frame back and forth, you can see the texture assignments change on the material nodes and in the texture properties slot list. The front side of the page is displaying the flowers during the first transition then displays the clownfish during the second transition. The back side of the page is displaying the flowers during the first transition, then displays the dolphins during the second transition. To properly set the clownfish texture frame display for the second scene strip, first look at the frame settings for the clownfish strip that precedes the transition. It has no hard or soft trim starts, so it begins at the first frame of the image sequence. But the sequence begins at edit frame 31, so it has a 30 frame offset. So we enter minus 30 for the texture frame offset. For the number of frames to display, refer to the last sequencer frame in which the image is visible, which in this case appears to be 220. Creating this effect appears to have been a long, tedious process. But the good news is that once you have constructed it, you can save it and use it for future projects and never have to create it again. You can save it within a video project file or in its own separate file. To make it easier to access, save it as a grouped object. Shift select Page Camera, Page Lamp, Page Deformer, and Page Object in the Outliner. Then Control G to group all. In the Object Properties Groups, rename the group to Page Curl Group. Later, when you need to use it within your current project, use the Append option in the File menu. Find the file in which the page curl group resides, navigate to the group folder, and select the page group to append it. It will appear in your scene with all the various components, settings, and materials intact and ready to use. Just import new texture images and create a new scene strip in your sequencer to get started. This is a very basic and simplistic effect, but you can use it as a basis for more realistic effects by creating more sophisticated page deformers, shaders, and lighting.